Well, here I am at the Big Bear Discovery Center where there's always something going on. And today they're having a little demonstration on primitive tanning of leather. Let's go over and watch. Well, that's something. That's not easy, is it, Ben? Hey, Ron, no, it's not too easy at all. Wow. It takes a little time. It takes some time and effort. So, so what do you do? You soak these first? These have been soaked in water for a couple days. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of rehydrate them. They were salted originally. Uh-huh. What these fellows are doing now is they're scraping off all the mucus, all the membrane, all the bits of flesh, that sort of thing from the hide. That's what causes that rotting smell that you can't see on camera. Oh, but right. Oh, it's there. Yeah, it does smell. So you get that part off, then we'll do uh, the hair, take that off next uh, next day. Then you'll soak it in a mixture of uh, emulsified oils. You can use animal brains, you can use milk, you can use eggs. And the end result is a nice piece of tan leather like that, which you can make into clothing, moccasins, bags, wow. what have you. It's very breathable, it's very soft, it's very durable. It's warm when it's cool, and it's cool when it's warm. That's right. It's the ideal leather for spending time outdoors. And you can use that to repair the hole in your knee of your mountain man pants. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> that well for Remember that. That's right. <laughs> That's something. That's why I think this guy's working for me today, you see. He makes all that leather. So oh, I, I know it. This is really cool. Yeah, this is a good, actually a good example. You can see all this all this meaty bits that came out here. Yeah. And now Miguel's going to go back to the top and clear off some more sections of hide. Is it, that's not a sharp knife, it's a... No, it's not it's too terribly sharp. Sharp, we just... Because that way you really lay into the hide, lay into the skin. Right, otherwise you, you push cut all it. the stuff off, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise you're just, just cutting the skin. What and kind of skins these, are these? Yeah. These are all deer skins. Deer skins. These are all deer skins. And uh, anybody watching the program who comes across a deer skin, either hunting or what have you, drop off at the Discovery Center, I'll take all the deer hides you give me. Right. I know you don't go out and shoot them. Well, I, I do, but I... You only get one a year. So. Yeah, right. I mean, you stay within the law. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't shoot them just for a skin. But if you're hunting anyway, do we have deer hunting up here in we San do. Bruno? We do. The season starts October 13th. Wow. So any deer hunters who catch a uh, get themselves a buck, uh huh, they'll take their hides. I'll now, pay you for them. Wow. Now, do they uh, they need a permit? You will and need, they get it from the fishing game? You need a hunting license, a valid hunting license, and you need to uh, get a deer tag permit for Zone D14. And I don't know if there's any deer tag permits available still. Uh, the drawing was this summer. Oh, I you see. You can contact Fish and Game, and they can tell you if there's any deer permits left still. Sure. But uh, even roadkill deer are fine for this sort of thing. Because all we're doing really is just taking a product that would, a byproduct, uh -huh. that would be thrown away and go to waste. And right. we're recycling it. So uh, brain tanning a deer skin like we're doing today, and we'll be doing it for the next couple days, is one of the most ecologically friendly things you can do. Sure. There's no harmful chemicals. It produces a beautiful product, and nothing of the animal is going to waste. Uh -huh. So it's really the ultimate ecologically friendly thing you can do with a disc. Wow. So you want to take a pass at it, Ron? No, I'll just watch. Thank you, anyway. <laughs> this smells enough, huh? Oh, yes. It does smell, doesn't it? If it's any now, you soaked the these for, for two days, you say? These, these uh, soaked for two days. And exactly. just water and... Just water. Just water. They come to a salted when, uh, if you have them stored, you can either store them by salting them or freezing them. Uh huh. So they come to you that way. And then you just want to re-soak them so they're softer and pliable enough to work with again. Oh, yeah. But the first day, the uh, the fleshing of the hide is the smelliest day. Right. Taking the hair off, not quite so bad. <laughs> by the time the hair and the flesh is off, you have a piece of raw hide. Essentially, you have, uh, oh, you have this right. thing right here, except it's a lot softer. Right. But it doesn't smell anymore because there's nothing there to smell. Sure. So once you're at this stage, you're pretty much home free. But these first couple days are kind of stinky. Yeah. But it's now, just, tomorrow you're going to take the hair off, you say? Tomorrow we the hair off. If you want to take a peek at it, come on back by. Okay. But uh, we'll be taking the hair off tomorrow and uh, making these rough, relatively unappealing masses of flesh and hair into beautiful, <laughs> usable leather that can either be made into moccasins, bags, or just hung over a chair and enjoyed. And the nice thing about these hides is deer skin that's been brain tanned. You see how labor intensive it is? Oh, yes, it is. You can find an old deer skin laying around somewhere. And by the time you put, you know, seven or eight days of the work into it, you have this piece of leather that could probably sell for 200 bucks. Really? 
All the time, never it takes. Don't be uh, don't be fooled by how easy Manuel Lewis this thing look. It takes a lot of effort to get these things clean. Oh yeah. And if you look back far enough in our history, probably everybody's ancestors at one point in time did this and wore hides that were tanned this way. Wow. And they are incredibly durable. Now, can you do any hide? Any hide I mean, you want. Like cow hide and cow hide, deer skin, elk, moose, antelope, uh -huh. uh, goat. Uh huh. If you have a cat that passes away and you want to keep it around as a purse, you can go ahead and tan the cat out. Really? Yeah, anything you want. And in theory, every animal has enough brains to tan its own hide. Oh, really? I know some humans I would probably disagree with about that, but, <laughs> um, but in theory, every animal you can use its own brains to tan its own hide. Um, we're going to be using eggs in this course because eggs are cheap, they're available, uh -huh. not hard to get a hold of, and the end result is the same. And a most fine one that bonds the fibers to create usable leather. Wow. So how do you get the hair off? You put, you use... Well, we'll be soaking these hides in a mixture of a hydrated lime uh -huh. and water. And it's an alkali solution. And that loses the top grain of the fiber, the top grain of the, of the hide, uh -huh. and the hair fibers. And then we'll just scrape that top grain off, and it comes off quite easily once you soaked it for a night or two. Wow. And once that part's done, you have a piece of raw hide looking leather, which will become a great deer skin by the time you actually brain it and smoke it to uh, trap in all the braining materials. Uh -huh. And the leather can be wetted again and dried back out again and not lose its uh, buttery softness like that pair, uh, that pair of leggings wow. that I showed you. Now, do you call this primitive uh, tanning? Primitive tanning, exactly. We're using all, admittedly, you know, some of the metal scrapers, rubber handles, plastic bags on our legs, that sort of thing. That's modern uh -huh. stuff. Right. But the process and the actual chemistry of it is the same thing that a, st a Stone they Age caveman would have done, you know, ages ago, tanning out a hide for his family. Wow. So the process goes back thousands and th tens of thousands of years. Wow. Which is what's kind of cool about it. You know, you get to bond with... Uh, sure. With... Uh, ancestors that way. And of course, you have a mountain man outfit, and you had a mountain man demonstration here at one time, and That's they right. all had, you know, leather pants, so... Mm -hmm. Leather pants, leather shirts, leather everything, really. Right. It's when you're walking through all this prickly pear and cacti, it's the most durable stuff you can wear. Is it really? Fast. And it's easily And it was too. kind of warm when we were here. It was mid-July, yeah. but it's not... When you wear uh, it, it's really not hot, is it? No, it's not. It's not hot. It's not unbearable. Um, it breathes really well. Uh huh. Um, and it's just quite comfortable. Wow. Plus, again, going back to the whole idea of when you come to the frontier, you couldn't go to Macy's and you couldn't go to J.C. Penney and buy a shirt or buy a pair of pants, you know. Right. So when those trousers wear out, there's accounts of trousers wearing out for only four days. Sure. You can always shoot a deer and, you know, spend a few days tanning it out and make a pair of pants, and those will last you for right. years. Plus, venison is good, too. Venison's it's good eating. You betcha. Yeah, buddy. Well, that's sure something. Is. Well, you're with the San Bernardino National Forest Association. San Bernardino Forest Association of the Big Bear Discovery Center. This is our first ever brain tanning workshop. Wow. And uh, how's it going, guys? <laughs> the smell takes over. Oh, Ooh, I know it. Right now, my nose is running quick. <laughs> but we'll be doing another one of these workshops in the spring. If you breathe through your mouth, you won't smell anything. All right. Learned that a long time ago. So we're going to do these in the spring, another one in the spring. We're going to do another one of these in the spring, exactly. Well, that's neat. So if anybody wants to uh, sign up for it in the spring or wants to be contacted about it, okay. they can just give me a call here at the Discovery Center. Okay. At 382-2872. Uh-huh. You can just check ask out. Ask for Ben. You're yeah, the ask, only ask, Ben. Ask for Ben, 382-2872. Uh-huh. And you can just ask for me, and uh, I'll put you on the list. So Great. So we set the date for the uh, brain tanning workshop in the spring. We can give you a call, and you can come out here and try it. You call brain tanning? Brain tanning, primitive tanning, however you want to call it. Wow. But uh, I'm learning some. There you go. A lot of people don't really realize how they do this. No, no, it's, uh, it gets overlooked for a lot of times. It's now, uh, someone commercially, like if they're making leather jackets, they would have machines that do this, don't they? Correct, yeah. I machines mean, will pull all this stuff off. And it's what they do is called chrome tanning. They just dump the hide uh -huh. into a big vat of salt of chromium. Oh, yes. And that drops all the hair off, and it drops all the other gunk and membrane stuff off, uh -huh. and it creates a very slick leather. But it's not breathable, and it's not warm when it's cold, and it's not cold when it's warm, and it gets clammy when it gets damp. Right. So it's, this is really the ultimate leather for anything outdoors, anything you're doing outside, moccasins, leggings, chaps, jackets, vests, anything you're doing outside, this is the ultimate leather for it. Wow, that's great. But it takes great. a lot of work, as you can see. And is it a, a waterproof? It's not waterproof, no. Oh, it's still, so if it rains, it, you still get, I mean, it still absorbs it rains, water. It'll still absorb water, exactly. But it'll dry out a lot faster, 
than uh, other type of tan leather. I see, well. sure. And it'll come back to a nice, soft consistency. I tell you, the Discovery Center, you really learn a lot. I guess that's why it's here. Well, we try and teach as much as possible. I know there's something always going on here. Gold panning or... Gold panning Pr primitive, or primitive tanning, tanning or exactly, or uh, tracking, or all sorts of stuff. I know. It. So uh, I always great. try and teach something that relates to nature and relates to the outdoors and how people used to live, how people can still live today if they choose to. And right. A lot of it's about stewardship and how to kind of you know, bond with nature. Right. And, and when it snows, you have snowshoeing. We do. Exactly. Yeah, which is really great. Go up to Holcomb Valley and yep. have that. Yep. Exactly. Well, they needed to check with the Discovery Center because... There's something always going on all year round, oh, every, not every just season. during the summer or spring or fall. No, every season. And we'll have uh, workshops this winter as well, some more printed skills workshops, uh -huh. some, some bag making, some moccasin making, that sort of thing. Right, so that's great. Just just keep checking back. We've always okay. got something happening. Okay, well, Some thanks. way to wow away those cold winter hours. You betcha. Well, thanks, Ben. This yeah, has really out, been Ron. interesting and educational. Yeah, thank you for coming out. Ooh. The smell. That's okay. The guy that does the dirty thing, you ought to get him up here to do this. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah right. That's right. We need to get him. That would be a He's on Discovery job. Center, isn't he? Yes. Or Discovery Channel, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he does the dirty jobs. There you go. Oh, man. This would be great. Well, thanks, guys. Enjoy. Well, there you have it, primitive tanning. That's how they did it ever since the caveman. So that's it from the Discovery Center where there's something always going on. Now, don't go away. Stay tuned for a word from my sponsors.